How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Friday here on the show, and, well, you don't know what that means, because uh, you never know what's going on in this business, because today, Vince is back. Yes, Vince McMahon has returned to the WWE Board of Directors. Now, exactly what all of this means, the story is not over now. There's there's a lot of things going on. But right now, he is back. And we're going to go over all of it after the break. But essentially, Vince claims that he must be there to facilitate a sale of WWE. He must be back. Now, WWE did send out a letter to the talent, which I have right here. And, uh, and this is what the letter says. Today, WWE formally announced that our founder, Vince McMahon, has rejoined the company's board of directors. The management team will remain in place with Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan as the co-CEOs and Paul Levesque as the chief creative officer. And we are at a unique moment, blah, 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 blah. So what they're saying right now is that Vince is back to facilitate a sale, but that's it. Does anybody here believe any of this? Anyway, we'll talk about all of this after the break, because there's a lot going on, and uh, and we'll never have time to cover it all, but we're going to do our best. And there's a little bit of other news as well, but not sure anything is going to uh, trump this insurrection here on January 6, 2023, but we shall see. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Going to try and get Dave on today, but he couldn't do it. He's actually doing another show right now. But if you are not a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, this might not be the worst day. I think he and Garrett will be up later tonight with a subscriber-only show. He'll be up with me this weekend with a subscriber-only show. And we'll have a lot of stuff. The new Observer has a lot on this story, although way more came out today. Yesterday's Observer was all about what he had threatened, and then when we woke up today, it all had come to pass. So, I guess, where to begin with this story? Well, I suppose we could start with... uh, we can start with this from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Friday SEC filing confirmed that former WWE chairman and CEO Vince McMahon is officially back on the company's board of directors. With three existing seat holders ousted and two others resigning. Those ousted were very much behind pushing for the investigation of Vince McMahon. This follows Thursday's news by the Wall Street Journal that McMahon was plotting his return to WWE in order to pursue a sale and be involved in the company's upcoming media rights deals. He resigned as both chairman and CEO in July 2022. By the way, for those of you angry at uh, Tony Khan's tweet today about how everyone is being nice to him at work last 24 hours, let's read what happened here. McMahon resigned as both chairman and CEO in July in the wake of a board investigation into multiple hush fund payouts to women who uh, he had allegedly, well, a lot of different things, sexual misconduct. News broke in December. He was looking to make his return to the company amid the feeling he got bad advice. It was bad advice after those, uh, after that scandal and the accusations and the hush money, the company hush money. He was given bad advice to step away. He decided now would be the time to return. 10 a.m. Friday, WWE issued a press release in which they said they welcomed McMahon's return and are looking forward to exploring all strategic alternatives to maximize shareholder value. As Vince McMahon stated yesterday, WWE has an exceptional management team in place, and I do not intend for my return to have any impact on their roles, duties, or responsibilities. Now, Vince had had, uh, requested to return to the board 
a little while back, and uh, and they essentially they told him no, and so uh, this was Plan B. So uh, his return includes a reinstatement. Think about this, by the way. I think I should just give up the prediction show. His return includes a reinstatement of former WWE executives George Barrios and Michelle Wilson. Do you remember what happened to them? He fired them. He thought that they had certain ideas. He had certain ideas. He was like, get out of here, and he fired them, and the stock collapsed when he fired them. Well, now they're back. They are filling uh, spots. Uh, from others on the board that have uh, quit or uh, or been uh, forced off the board. Hey, Brian, can I throw something in right there? If you'd like, yeah. Wilson and Barrios stepped down in January of 2020 because they did not want the the company to take the network that they helped to create and license that network, okay? Vince had an issue with that because of what Nick Khan was doing and then further did in – getting their content licensed and getting massive television deals for them, which basically opened up the door for Nick Khan to come in. So as Vince is saying that not only is he the only one that can help guide them through any sale or media negotiations deal, he is bringing in Wilson and Barrios, who basically had to go to the side because they didn't like the way that they were doing the media negotiation deals. So... Everybody looking to work as a happy family. So go ahead. Now there's a lot. I mean, there's so much going on here, but I'm going to try to make it. I'm going to try and make it easy for everybody. Okay. So as noted, he wanted to come back, and they told him no. This will not be in the best interest of the shareholders. So he has done what he has done here to uh, basically put himself back on the board, and uh, and get rid of people that. Uh, you know, were involved in uh, spearheading this investigation and putting his own people in, okay? Now, if you guys remember, if you guys remember, there's a lot of talk about the stock market and the stock today because this this stock is up 24% right now, 24%, okay? Now, the first time that there was a story in the Wall Street Journal about uh, maybe two, three weeks ago, the first time that there was a story where it had been mentioned that Vince wanted back. Do you guys remember what happened to the stock that day? The stock fell. Okay. Now, Vince is back, and the stock is skyrocketed. So w- w- what's going on here? Well, the original story about how Vince wanted back in was merely that. Vince wanted back in. Now... If you only hear that Vince wants back in, well, what do you you presume? You presume that he wants to come back and do everything that he was doing before. The stock market was not bullish on that idea. The difference here, which is very important, the difference here is that Vince claims that I am not coming back to do all of those things that I did before. As I noted before the break, they did send out a letter to talent. There's an all-employee uh, meeting that's going to kick off in, in 12 minutes now. It does not involve the wrestlers, the talent, anybody. It's only the company employees, okay? I want to make that clear. But in the, in the message that they sent out to talent, it specifically said, Vince has rejoined the board of directors. The management team will remain in place. Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan as co-CEOs, which that tells you that what they're claiming is Vince is not coming back to regain his role as CEO. And it notes that Paul Levesque is still the chief creative officer. So what they're claiming is that Vince is not coming back to head creative. They're claiming, and Vince is claiming, that he is only coming back Because they are gearing up to do negotiations for a new television deal. And Vince believes that this is the prime opportunity to sell this company. It can only be done with him, which in fact legally it can because he can block a sale. And so therefore he must, he must return to facilitate the sale. This is why the stock has skyrocketed, okay? Now, it does not appear that a sale is imminent. 
I honestly don't know if he actually wants to sell. He says he does. They say that's why he's coming back. But I don't trust this guy. I don't know about the rest of you. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. But does anybody on this planet actually believe that literally he has no desire to come back and run creative and have his hands in everything. The reason that he's coming back is, I'm sure, he wants full control over everything again. And obviously, if there is a sale, he wants to capitalize on this sale. And he wants to make it clear, or he wants to make sure that if there is a sale, he will somehow guarantee his position in this company when it is sold. Now, you know, we learned from uh, Ted Turner that nothing like that's ever a guarantee, okay? But I think that's what he wants. And, uh, and I think he also knows that if this company is sold and he is ousted, well, once it's sold, there's no way he's getting back in. So there's a lot going on. But right now, the claim is he's just there to help facilitate this sale, which the stock market, you know, investors are like, they're fine with that. Uh, but we shall see what happens in terms of putting that little hand in all of the other pots, which I would like to talk more about after the break, but we'll get Mike's thoughts as well. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervive, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Anything you want to add or should I continue on? <laughs> That's up to you. It's your show. Well, would I, you like me to throw in a little something here? Or I not? got more I can say, and then you can jump in if you want. We got we got a half hour. So first off, this is not this is not over now. It could be over, but it's not over in the sense that this this could end up a legal issue. But it's gonna end up a legal issue if something happens and this stock plummets. Like if, if he had if he had walked back onto the board and the stock had dropped to 30, 40, I mean this would have been a bloody, ugly battle. Uh, he baby-faced himself, the stockholders, with this. But he, it shot up, okay? Yeah. But it shot up because of the idea that he's coming in to sell this place. And the stock market or, doesn't or, care. Or, this is, or it's the impending media deals. Either way, it's a windfall for investors. Well, the That's... point is, I think everybody knew these media deals were coming up. But the difference is, Vince is coming in to say, I'm ready to sell this place. Let's get this deal done. So... That's what's happening like now. That's what that's what this bump is about. But which is is crazy because in the same breath, it is directly opposite what they have proven, which is they can do this without him. And the fact that they don't need him, they need Nick Khan more to do these deals. I mean, the whole part of him for years, we talked about it with him leaving was this company will tank without Vince. There was always that concern that that could happen. And now look at it, but now we're saying this is what he's saying he's got to come back and do. It's just, it's bizarre. Well, the, the company is is worth, I don't know, whatever, however many billions, but it's going to sell for like, I don't know, six, seven, eight billion dollars, a preposterous amount of money. And that's going to go into the pockets of shareholders, a portion of that. And so uh, that's that's what's going on. Now, my point is, that's what's going on now, Okay. What's going to happen if, you know, as time goes on, if it becomes clear that, you know, there actually isn't a sale coming imminently? I mean, what's the stock going to do then? Uh, whether this, whatever happens here is going to be determined by the stock price. And what he can get his hand in is also likely going to be determined by the stock price. Now, he is saying he's not going to be doing all this stuff. And what is, what is uh, you know... Here's the thing with whether Vince gets involved in creative or not. And I want to make this clear because a lot of you complain and don't watch the show. I do, okay? Here's how you're going to know. First off, if he's there every week, it's going to be a pretty good indication, okay? But here's how you're going to know if he is pulling those strings behind the scenes. Well, when you see a mass layoff, pretty good indication. That's number one. Number two... When that Raw show ends and they got no matches announced for next week, that's a pretty good indication. When that Raw show ends and they've got five matches announced and two of them happen the next week and three don't happen at all, that's a pretty good indication. 
When guys get all their information about what they're going to do next Monday on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever, and then all of a sudden on Monday, it's all different, you're going to have a pretty good indication, okay? I know I do these raw reports, and I talk about things, and, you know, some things are stupid, and so you cherry pick, that means Vince is back. He ain't back right now, okay? But trust me, you're going to know immediately when that guy is back in charge of creative, even if he's hiding in some bunker on Jupiter and uh, eh, madly texting all of his information to uh, Hunter and Steph, you're going to know. Trust me. Now, what's really sad if he comes back is all these people that work there. Because, listen, I have not talked to everybody, but I talk to a lot of people, and I've talked to people that talk to a lot of other people. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everybody... Every last single person was happy when that guy was gone. But you know what? Most of them were. You know what happened? For most of those wrestlers, and you know what's funny is like, ah, oh, the show still sucks, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know what? When what's his face wins the title, they go, you deserve it or whatever. No one deserves a belt. It's fake, okay? But you know what those people deserve? They deserve to not hate going to work, okay? If you have a job where, like, stuff happens and, and you're dealing with, you know, people who have died or what, that's a job that, like, that probably ain't fun going to work every day, okay? But there's no reason that you should hate going to work for a wrestling company. The reason people hated it was because of one guy who liked to make everybody's lives miserable. Well, that guy got ousted, and you know what? A lot of people suddenly had fun going to work again. It wasn't so bad. You could go to work, and you, you would know what you were going to do, and you would do matches, and you'd have fun, and you could actually talk to the guy in charge, and he actually would really legitimately listen to your ideas, and he'd let you do this, and he'd let you do that, and he'd call you up and pay you more, all this stuff. You know, the morale since Vince left is night and day. Night and day. Now these poor blokes may have to suffer again. God, that's all I heard about was miserable people today. Like, God, are we really, are we really going to have to go back to that again? Well, you know what? He says no. I don't believe him. I hope for the best for you guys. I cross my fingers. I wish for only the best for all the wrestlers that work there. Even the ones that have bad matches. They're all people. I hope for the best. And man, everyone getting on poor Regal. Golly. Come on. You know, I can't speak with that much color or vigor over how it's going to affect these guys if he comes back in a creative role. Um, you know, right now, in reality, because he's not even in a creative role, at least that's what he's saying, and I know what you're saying, absolutely, but, like, you know, he's asking to come back to join the board and how they responded back to him. Yes, they unanimously responded back to him saying that your return at this time is not prudent. It's not prudent at this juncture because there's still investigations pending. And what is also being maybe overlooked in this is, quote, a variety of factors, including non-public information the board has become aware of and its risks yeah. to the company non -public and Non-public information. There's more, everybody, that hasn't come out yet. Of placing a greater spotlight on these issues, unquote. And we heard about the issue with the spa member in California that caused her boyfriend to come to a WWE event with a baseball bat and get turned away. And we remember that story. And... Manjeet Singh and Ignis LaHood, you know, uh, LaHood was just added to the board last year, late last year. Manjeet Singh, though, was the one who was the board's internal investigator into all of this stuff as it was happening. And you also, if you recall, and maybe some of you do, there were board members that were that resigned last year and it's not like anybody is following them on a golf course asking hey man what went down why did you quit we still don't know why those people quit that was after a whole bunch of palace intrigue had taken place and i know there's the palace intrigue part of this and all of it and the the obvious what it could lead to if he does get involved in creative and all that sort of stuff and how these people can work together but this guy also has been accused of 
coercion. He's been accused of rape. We have the Chatterton thing being brought up. We had another suit that has been brought because they've, you know, the statute of limitations, they changed those rules. So, like... Yeah, but how dare Tony tweet? <laughs> but how dare Tony tweet, God. you know? I is know. that what this has come to? Yeah, that's what it's come to. For some people who are that simple-minded, that's what this thing has come to because they can't step back and look at this. And when you unfold the picture, it goes in a lot of different ways. Financially, this, that, the third. There's a lot of different moving parts here. But when you stand back and remember what this guy is in trouble for, you know, I know that if nobody pays attention, much like Dana White, and the stock price is fine and the ratings are good on slap fight once it debuts because it was only pushed back a week i mean you know if if all that nobody lays the pressure on if nobody holds the heat to to the wwe investors and to the other board members and to the company in general and to its 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 darling advertisers then nothing's going to change if he's back and, and maneuvering these deals after what he's been accused of after the company has proven they don't need him to do these deals when the guy they got from CAA is the most important part of doing these deals. I don't know. I mean, I can't believe it's really that much about the dollar, but it, it usually is. Of course it is. Kidding me? It's all about the dollar. Pathetic. That's the way things go, dude. Still, still pathetic. This person says, Vince says he's just coming back to manage and won't be involved in creative or talent. And this man has a long history of being completely honest and consistent. There's nothing to worry about. Got a lot of those today. <laughs> Seems people find this man to be untrustworthy. You think? Maybe we should do a poll. Is this man trustworthy? <laughs> Is Vince McMahon trustworthy or not, everybody? That's going to be the poll I'm going to put up on Twitter. Actually, I'm not going to put it on Twitter. No, don't. That would be ridiculous. No. This person wants me to... Uh... No, I can't I can't read my tweet on air. It was two words, and one was a <laughs> dreaded F-bomb. You want to say he wants you to fornicate with yourself in a way that is anatomically impossible? Well, you know, at the end of the day... And actually, believe it or not, this is this is that exact situation. We We have to wait for this to play out, okay? The idea that he's back is just absolutely, positively mind-blowing. But, realistically, if he actually is back only for the reasons that he claims, it's not the end of the world. But I don't believe that. Nor do I think anyone else believes that. Nor do I believe that's actually his intention. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You remember when old Vince left? I do. You remember the number one question everybody had when he left? Oh, there were several. Which one are you referring to? What is this bloke going to do? Oh, yeah. That was the number one question. Um, Yeah, kind of. Are you going to take a painting? (laughs) (laughs) Is he going to go to the senior center and play bingo? What's this guy going to do? So are they playing now? What's that sport they're all doing? The pickleball? Just imagine him out there in Vero Beach, or where's he at there? And uh, hey, he was. You know something about old people? What's that? Well, a couple of weeks ago. Just to lighten the mood a little bit. A couple of weeks ago at my gym, they've got some uh, they got some classes. And they've got like, you know, uh, cardio kickboxing and these other ones. And one morning I decided, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take this cardio kickboxing class. That sounds like a lot of fun. So uh, to digress even further, do you know that when I was in kindergarten, they had a couple of after school activities that you could do as a kindergartner? And I will never forget that uh, I liked The Muppet Show. Man, we're really going on all sorts of circuitous paths here. I liked The Muppet Show, and, uh, and I wanted a Kermit the Frog doll, and, and there was no Amazon, and we couldn't find one. And so uh, my, my father, which if you know my father, this is an even more astounding story, he and I sewed a, uh, a Kermit doll. Okay. And so around that time, I got into kindergarten, and there were after-school programs, and one of them was sewing class. And I thought, I should take sewing class. I want to learn how to sew so I can make more Muppets, okay? So I uh, signed up for it, and, uh, and I remember I was a little tiny little bloke, and I went to uh, the class I was supposed to go to. I went to the room after school, and I opened the door, and there's 30 girls and not one boy. 
And uh, and I freaked out, started crying, went running, missed the bus. I'll never forget it. One of my earliest memories. I should have just gone in. But anyway. So I decided I was going to go take this cardio kickboxing class. And it was it was largely similar to uh, to what happened when I went to the sewing class. It was all women. There's not one man there. <laughs> Can you without crying? Now, uh, you know, that could have been like a really cool thing. And... But not only was it all women, but there was no one under the age of 70 in this class. Okay? Apparently the younger people go at night, because I guess most people have a normal job during the day. But you know what? I was like, I'm going to do this class with these old ladies. You know? So I went in there, and, uh, bro, these old ladies kicked my ass. Oh, my God. I'm sweating. My heart's pounding. And I look over, they ain't even breathing hard. They're just killing it. So anyway, I can only imagine Vince trying the same thing I did. He, he might have actually died if he tried to keep up with these old ladies. But anyway, what's the guy going to do was the question. Now, there's a point I brought <laughs> all this the up. There is a point I brought all this up, okay? <laughs> Go ahead, yes. All right. So Vince McMahon was ousted, and he had no hobbies. He'd never done anything else in 70 years. He has nothing to do, but he has more money than he could possibly spend for the remainder of his days, unless he wanted to negotiate to buy the moon, for example. Like, to live a somewhat normal life, or even a rich person's life, he had more money than he could possibly spend in a lifetime, okay? Especially at 77 or whatever he is. So you're telling me... I'm not. ...that after having literally nothing to do in his life, but more money than he could ever spend, he decided, what I would like to do is go back solely to facilitate a sale so that in the end I will have even more money than I could ever possibly spend and I will go back to Gold's Gym and do the cardio kickboxing class with the other old ladies. That's what you're telling me? No. The guy's bored out of his skull. He's completely bored out of his skull and he wants to get back Doing everything that he was doing before. Right? I guess. His motivation cannot be to have more money by selling no. this place. No. That cannot be his motivation to come back. No, his motivation obviously seems to be that he needs the power. He needs something to do. He needs to feel in the mix. He's Vince McMahon. Damn it. I am the alpha. I steered this company. Sure. I stepped down, but I got bad advice about stepping down about those charges of, uh, of all those things that I did and all the money that was hidden and the reasons why that have come out. I got bad advice on all of that sort of stuff. I need to be there. Yes. I'm sure that's what it is. But when you have all of that money, when you have that kind of drive, when you have that, all of those things at your disposal, including the fact that you have sidestepped, for the most part, some real public outrage over the type of person that you have been accused of being, and you've been able to really sidestep that and really put yourself in a, a rare error. The Don Kings of the world who killed a man but is looked at as a, a high figure in, in the promotional world. Bob Arum, who is tied in with all sorts of different things over the years. You know, people like that. Vince McMahon has fit in perfectly with those guys. And he could do anything else. He could fund something else. He could find something else to do. He is just choosing not to do that because he is... He only knows one thing, and that shows a huge flaw in him. Everything else he's ever tried, he has failed at. Everything else he's ever stepped out to do, he has failed at. So here's the one thing, and here's the one thing he could have some power over. But the reality is, is his brick wall right now from the company that he wants to take back over 
is the possibility that there is more that's going to come out on you being possibly uh, obviously a you definitely a somebody that has had a lot of sexual improprieties to to what levels we're not a hundred percent sure on we know what seemingly some of those ndas have accused you of and you're coming in back to that like and who levies those things back at him with those people gone from the board if they come out again then who are they who are the people that are left that are going to say that and obviously that's one bullet they have in their holster i don't care what wwe tweeted out today as a company and we're gonna work together now that the the executive chairman's back a worked title for this guy i i, I don't know i i just i cannot believe with some of this stuff that we're not going to have more because the timing of that last Wall Street Journal story coming out the same day as the Vice documentary, I don't think that that was a coincidence. Do you? There's no such thing as a coincidence in a story like this. You kidding me? Yeah. This person says, I trust Vince McMahon as much as I trust Disco Inferno in his opinions. I have way more trust in Disco Inferno. Let me tell you. Is he still being investigated? Could something come out of that investigation that changes all of this? Well, they they said the investigation is closed, but they have indicated that there are other. What was the exact? You should read the exact line, Mike. It is. So we don't screw this up. It is the letter back to McMahon cited. Quote, a variety of factors, including non-public information the board has become aware of and its risks to the company and its shareholders of placing a greater spotlight on these issues, unquote. And that's when Vince then responded after that in the New Year's Eve letter back to them saying that uh, he wanted his direct involvement. And that, quote, it is unfortunate that the board would seek to use this conclusion to attempt to extract an agreement for me not for me not to return to the company. Any construct along those lines is entirely unacceptable, especially in light of the critical inflection points now facing the company. So, again, Vince McMahon using the possibility of a worked sale to fire back against the fact that he generously stepped down after word has come out that he used company funds wrong, which goes against FCC. And and I I know I said that terribly, but it goes against the FCC and actual like rules that, you know, affect stockholders, like all of the stuff that came out, like he's using like, hey, I stepped down of my own good deeds. How can you shut me out of this? It's just that's mind numbing, too. Well, let's look at a couple of other news notes here very quickly. If there's anything else that comes out about this, we can talk about it, but there's a few things. Rampage is tonight. Top Flight versus John Moxie and Brian Danielson. Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker versus the Renegade Twins. Darby Allen versus Mike Bennett for the TNT title. Pero Peligroso against TBA. That's total, total NXT name. And the House of Black will speak. I would like to see them wrestle. I'm sick of them speaking. I want to see them wrestle matches. And then the, the uh, what it's called, Battle of the Belts. Acclaimed versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal, no holds barred. Jade Cargill versus Sky Blue for the TBS title for God only knows what reason after Wednesday. And Orange Cassidy versus Kip Sabian for the All-Atlantic title. And we also had the Dynamite rating, which uh, mixed bag for sure. Because the number was not good, and the 18 to 34 was drastically low, yet it still was the fourth highest rated show on cable. And if you exclude uh, NFL programming, would have been number one, which tells you that everything on cable did a low 18 to 49 number. 864,000 viewers, the 18 to 49, 0.26, which was the lowest that Dynamite has drawn in that category. Since January 6, 2021, Uh, there was a big increase in males, 12 to 34, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, there's a lesson to be learned about this Vince McMahon thing that... uh, There's a lot. Really, Tony Khan's tweet kind of should sort of, you know, 
hammer this lesson home, but oh boy, the the lesson is that nothing is forever until until you are dead. <laughs> And uh, and not <laughs> to make what you're actually extrapolating out of this ac- worked lesson. Actually, not to make light, but uh, even when you are dead, it's a while after you're dead before it's forever. Because uh, we got to shout out old Demar Hamlin here. Sky is uh, breathing on his own. He's talking to his family. First thing he said when he came out was, "Did we win?" And the nurses told him, "You won at life," which in fact is true. So we talked about this story on Monday, but. Holy smokes, what a story. So, uh, but yes, nothing is forever, guys. Vince is gone, you know, whatever. That's just a story, dude. It is. Am I wrong? Am I wrong, Mike? Um, no. Technically, you can take a lot of different things out of a story, and that is one thing that can be taken out of a story that you have taken out of this story in relate to the people. And you know what? Maybe one person out there is sitting there going, you know what? I relate to the story that Brian pulled out of that story, and now I relate to him even more, and I'm going to give him money as a super follower on his Twitter. Wow. I would never ask for that sort of thing out of that story. Back in a moment, Observer Live. In the wake of video emerging... Of UFC President Dana White and his wife exchanging slaps during an argument on New Year's Eve. The debut of White's new Power Slap League has been delayed a week. That'll show you. Jesus Christ. Start talking or I'm going to start cursing. You know, if you want a feel-good show, if I got one for you. Last night's Brian and Vinny show. Hey. Vinny and I spent almost 90 minutes talking about our trip to the Climate Pledge Arena. Mm. Where we watched AEW Dynamite. An excellent feel-good show with local boy done good Darby Allen winning that TNT title from Samoa Jones in the main event. And then a review of an insanely, insanely excellent match. Which, by the way, this Vince story is so big, I haven't heard one person talking about whatever Dave rated that uh, Omega Osprey match. (laughs) That's telling you something right there, dude. I thought that'd be all anybody was talking about today. But apparently not. So anyway, that match was great. And uh, we talked about it. 33 and a third stars. Did he? He did. Something like that. Wow. I think I gave it 15. Nobody got on me, though. Even? I think, well, I couldn't give it a half. Oh. It was a solid solid 15-star match, I believe. Uh, Apparently here, uh, six and a quarter stars. Six and a quarter? Six and a... I don't... (laughs) He's just making some stuff up now. No. Everybody stop feeding into this. Stop doing it anyway for your own sake, because now I think the man is just trolling you. No, of course not. (laughs) Should have been seven, though. (laughs) You know, we had a guy who went Why back. Why was it seven and a quarter? We went back and we saw we had a guy who watched all of those uh, those uh, Okada versus Omega matches, and they said this one was better than all of them. It damn sure may have been. Could've I'm going to have to go back and watch them. But uh, <laughs> anyway, you know what? At the end of the day, everyone, who cares? Give it whatever you want. Pull a granny and give it a 12. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live.